Hi, um, in this video we'll, we'll go over the full solution, so all the details and edge cases um, to the problem measuring traffic in the 2019 February Bronze Contest. Um, so what we covered last time was the first part of the problem in which we have these conditions and uh, the steps on what to do if we meet these conditions. So this is what you do if um, you're trying to find the traffic flow before the highway. Um, but after the highway, you um, follow a very similar pattern. Um, and we'll just go over that right now. Actually, I got to do this. Okay. Okay, so for the second part of the problem, so we're gonna be we're gonna have to face the same exact conditions, except this time, um, instead of looping backwards, we're just gonna loop forwards on the um, inputs, uh, and the reason being is that whatever comes before impacts the amount of traffic flow at the end of the highway in contrast to the previous part of the problem where where whatever comes before or sorry whatever comes after impacts the previous part of the the first part of the highway um so yeah um it's gonna follow basically the same logic um so i recommend watching the previous videos if you are lost at any point in this video so the first case will go with off. And so this is going to be the exact same as the on. Just think of it as everything has been reversed. Um, so if there's a ramp coming off, then what we're going to do is subtract the per min from a max and per max from. Yeah. So. I'm just going to visualize this one real quick because it's the first one. <coughs> Sorry. And so if we have like um, one and two, and here we have four and five. So we're trying to find whatever is here. And we're going to iterate this way. And so we have a min and a max as four and five. Um, and then we were given that um, at least one or, or at most two units of traffic come off before this, um, before the end of the highway. So what that means is that there's going to be at least one or at most two units of traffic less after this ramp or this segment of the highway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a min, which is uh, four, and we're going to subtract the cur max, which is two. And that gives us two. And two is like the very least there can be of traffic after this point. And then we're going to take um, uh, a max, which is five, minus cur min, which is one, and that's four. And four is the maximum amount of high uh, traffic flow there can be after this point. So yeah, that's the logic behind this. Okay, so yep, two for none. This is the like exact same as the previous. Yeah, nothing changes for this one. And three when it's on. Uh, it's the same as when it was off for the previous part. We're going to add Kermin to Amin. Or max to a max. And so, yeah. So now we have all the conditions set for um, the two parts of the problem. 
So if we follow this first condition, I mean part and set of conditions, then we're going to get the answer to the the amount of traffic flow before the highway. And if we follow the second part, then we'll get the amount of traffic flow after. Um, yeah, so that's the logic of this problem. Um, I guess one thing that uh, we should cover is, I guess, what do we start off for for the A min and A max values? And so um, the logic for this problem is as we're iterating through, we want to, you know, um, I guess more and more um, shrink the range of these values. And so what that means is we want to have the range for a min and a max in the very beginning as um, large as possible. So uh, what that means is we can just set a min Um, and actually, let me write this out. So set a min to int min and set a max to int. And so since these are the largest pos possible digits, integers, um, I guess we don't really need to even do that, but I guess just to be safe, we'll set them to the largest and smallest possible values. And so what this means is as we iterate through the um, segments and the sensor data um, input, it's gonna, um, is always gonna shrink and become as specific as possible. And yeah. That is the solution to this problem. Um, at this point, I recommend you try implementing this. Um, but if you have any trouble, I'll go over the implementation um, in the next video. Thank you.